Photographic Composition, Lecture 4, Still Life and Product, Part 2. This image started a revolution in advertising photography in 1953. Um, Bert Stern was given the assignment of photographing um, for Smirnoff Vodka, and his concept, and he was in his early 20s at the time, was to simply take um, a martini glass, fill it with uh, vodka, and place it in front of one of the uh, pyramids in Egypt. Um, at the center of it is this um, optical phenomenon of the inversion of the image, so we get a small pyramid uh, upside down reflected in, or not reflected, but uh, projected through the glass. Um, and its simplicity is what made it revolutionary. Um, we don't see the label of the, uh, we don't see the bottle, we don't see the, its label. It's uh, pared down, there's no lighting except for um, what was actually happening with the sun. And this is an image of him actually making that photograph. Bernd and Hilla Bescher uh, were German photographers who specialized in uh, documents of um, various industrial um, constructions such as this, and um, they would exhaustively document these forms um, and present them very often in grids um, with as many as 16 or 24 of them um, all on the same uh, page. Um, their uh, approach is very straightforward. Um, no embellishment. It's really just about the object itself. And if they were not able to achieve the right height, um, or what they felt was the right height to, uh, for their point of view, they would actually construct scaffolding to uh, raise the camera. This is a still life by Irving Penn. And um, although he was best known for his fashion photography, um, he also engaged in a lot of um, still life um, and product photography. Um, here, just a tableau that he created and, and lit very simply but very dramatically. He also did a series on flowers, um, which, again, extremely simple. Um, all we see is the flower in the background, a little bit of shadow on the background. Um, really simple. As a result, the flower becomes like sculpture. In that same tradition, Hiroshi Sugimoto, who's best known for um, um, other kinds of photography, uh, did a series on um, basic uh, tools, um, in this case a ramp, um, in the form of a piece of sculpture that he lit very simply. Um, and you'll see over and over again that these uh, photographers prefer simplicity to complication and as a result achieve a great deal more power with their images. This uh, is by Sheila Metzner, who um, uses a process that is very similar to autochrome um, called frisson, um, which is was uh, invented around the same time that the autochrome was. Um, and there is still a company in France that produces these um, uh, the, the film that um, she was able to make these images with. They are very soft, um, uh, pictorialist quality to them. Um, they're very, I, I think, quite, quite gorgeous. Uh, James Casebeer is uh, an American photographer um, who first came to prominence photographing um, scale models that he would then fill with water, um, as you see in this image. He's continued with scale models, um, and but br branched out of uh, uh, interiors and um, flooding and um, has created um, rather complex scenes like this, which almost look real, but not quite. Um, and the, the lighting is rather naturalistic and at the same time not quite. Um, so these become representations of, of a world that, that is quite surreal. And this gives you an idea of um, the complexity of the model that, that you just saw taken from the, um, uh, the point of view that, that he was aiming at in the first place. Also gives you a sense of how it's lit. This is by Daryl Curran, um, who 
has done a series of objects laid uh, very simply on top of a uh, scanner. And rather than um, closing the lid, he leaves it open and um, places other objects on top, um, sometimes fabric. Um, in this case, looks like burlap or, or some kind of loose um, webbing as a background. And as a result, uh, really interesting um, lighting effects and um, the interplay of objects um, in very surprising compositions. This is by Andreas Gursky. And this was actually made by uh, creating only a portion of the, uh, uh, this Prada display and um, then photographing it, re-photographing it, um, and putting the, uh, the finished images together um, in a composite. So he ended up with this, um, what appears to be a full display, even though only maybe a quarter of it was um, actually uh, built. This is by Stephen Shore, made while he was traveling around um, the US in the 1970s. And uh, everything was potential subject matter as far as he was concerned. And this happened to be breakfast one day and um, decided to uh, uh, focus on it with his 8x10 camera. And um, again, very simple. Um, there's a lot going on here, but it's still, the strategy is very simple and it's easy to read what's going on. Which brings us to food. And um, food is a specialty in and of itself. Um, there are photographers who do nothing but shoot food. Um, in this case, looks like oatmeal with a variety of uh, blueberries and um, other things on top of it. Here's a, a bowl of pasta. And um, these food photographs tend to be um, uh, cover a wide range. Some are very complex, and others are very simple. This one's getting on the verge of, of uh, kind of complicated with the, the silverware and the bowls in the background and the, the stem of the glass. Um, but as with all of these, the, there's a, a great concentration on the, uh, uh, the texture of the light and how that makes the food look. And in this case, it makes it um, um, look very, um, um, it's tasty. Um, this isn't exactly food, but um, it's a tablescape that's related to food uh, with the, the background becoming as important as the objects on the table um, at creating a mood. And um, as we've seen with others, um, this is, side lit to the, the point of almost being backlit. Um, it would appear that the, that the light is coming through this window, um, which may or may not actually be the case. It may have, have been uh, provided by other lights, but uh, uh, the illusion is that um, the uh, window is, is lighting the objects on the table. Extreme close-ups of food sometimes are, um, are called for, as with this. In this case, um, shot with a very large aperture um, and as a result um, achieving um, extremely shallow um, depth of focus where only the, um, the couple of cherries in the foreground are in focus and the rest, um, the foreground and the background have gone out of focus. Obviously a uh, sculpture made out of uh, various organic forms and um, uh, lit in such a way and against a, a background that suggests that this is in fact a bird of prey on somebody's arm. This is a very simple um, uh, tableau and um, I think particularly powerful because of the uh, way the shelf that the uh, vase is sitting on is shown um, in its compl in, shown completely on the left. Um, but it juts out from the right. Um, and again, the light is, is um, very dramatic. Um, it's soft enough that we don't have harsh shadows, but uh, crisp enough, and, and especially in relation to the background, which is quite dark. Um, and then you have the finishing touch of the, the one tulip bending over to look at its reflection in the ball on the right. This is a pair of chairs. This is very typical of um, furniture photography. Um, the chairs are shown 
um, with no adornment. Um, uh, there's nothing going on in the background. All we see are the chairs. They're reduced to their um, basic forms and are, I think, very powerful as a result. Um, the lighting is very simple, extremely soft, coming primarily from uh, up above. Um, and the arrangement of the, the chairs, there's like a dialogue that um, exists between them um, that makes the image more complex and, and compelling. And here we see them in a, um, a real environment, or what appears to be a real environment, although it's, it's a very stylized one. Seeing the chairs in use is also um, instructive and also enticing. Um, so people can see how uh, an object might look if it was placed in, in their own home. This is going back to the very simple way of, of uh, describing an object. Um, here the background is, um, for all intents and purposes, completely gone. Um, it's photographed on a white background. Um, very, only just the, the slightest um, hint of shadows underneath. And obviously a very uh, idiosyncratic chair. Um, with still life um, uh, in shooting furniture, it's unusual to see um, a person actually included in, in a shot, but um, sometimes it is done, and, and in this case it appears that they photographed it without a model and then decided, um, perhaps because of the scale of the, the uh, chair, wanted to also show it with somebody sitting in it. And which is more compelling? is um, up to the, the individual viewer, I think. Again, treatment of the, uh, uh, the product is at the discretion of the photographer, usually a, uh, an art director and people representing the, uh, the manufacturers. Here we see a uh, Chanel bottle photographed against a stark black background and virtually the same, slightly different, actually, um, bottle, perhaps a, an earlier or later version of it on the right, photographed against white. Um, both very striking, but in completely different way. And here we see another um, uh, Chanel um, tableau, but with a lot of other objects included. Um, it's really all about, obviously, about color. And um, the lighting is extremely subdued. Um, to the point of there being almost no shadows, but there is shading um, nonetheless, which makes the objects all look very three-dimensional. It's also photographed on a reflective surface um, with a colored background. Um, jewelry photographed on uh, what looks like a, a ball of uh, uh, wire and um, uh, also done in, in a, with a vignetting effect, so you end up with this circle of um, darkness surrounding it. Um, the, I think the, the, uh, what really works here is the contrast between the pearls and that, um, that wire, and also the color. This shows a couple of setups of um, still lives. Um, the object on the uh, left the, the table that the, um, the, the subject is sitting on is used uh, to create a sense of light coming up from um, below or from behind. Um, the uh, material is translucent and it will project light. And on the right, um, yet another setup. And these are a couple of other setups. Um, what usually happens is the photographer will have some notion of how they want the objects to look in, uh, in the camera and um, then start playing with various um, uh, techniques to, to light using reflecting or direct light um, and creating shadows, um, using flats to um, obscure light partially and um, can get very complicated and um, as demanding as any other discipline within photography. Here's a uh, automobile photography is is um, a uh, has been a uh, an important specialty 
Um, most of the, the people who photograph cars do nothing but. Um, as interesting as the images have become, though, um, they are also now being done um, to a great extent using um, CGI computer-generated imagery. And um, what you see is not necessarily what actually occurred, um, but the illusion is there. Here, white car against um, on a white surface with shading and um, a uh, black and white sky. And here we see the another extreme where we see the bright orange car against a very dark foreground and background, and just the faintest silhouette of a couple of giraffes of all things on the uh, right. The lighting is um, all uh, projected at the car. And here, um, no doubt, a composite um, of a, a car superimposed against an image of a building that either does or doesn't exist. And um, all in the uh, uh, in service of selling automobiles.